Kirsten Ludwig and welcome to my home. Um, this is where I spend most of my time writing my music or napping as well, which I do a lot. My new record, We Get It Now, is kind of a symbol of my life of the last two years and I spent a lot of time here kind of hashing out the details of those memories and kind of my experiences. I'm so excited to have this record come out and be heard because I feel like it represents not only my sadness and what I had to go through, but also my resilience and triumph that I found on the other side. We're gonna go talk to some of my favorite people and go see some of my favorite places that played such a big role in my record, We Get It Now. Hey, we're in the atrium right now and um, I brought you to this space because I love it so much. Um, it's so beautiful and serene and um, it really influenced the writing on my record. Um, I've come here after work and early in the mornings. This is Marshall Wildman, my really good friend. How are you? Good. Um, so in the process of recording, I kind of remember just throwing you into things. Um, do you prefer that or do you prefer when people bring ideas to you? No, I really liked it. I thought it was great. I've, I've done some stuff before where you like get the track, like a bunch of demos and listen to them and then like you know, come up with like ideas for the songs and then go into the recording them and like everything's changed. <laughs> and they're like, what you thought is like nothing. And then you, you're attached to like old ideas. So it was awesome to just like show up and then just try something out. Yeah, I feel like also it was good that we played some shows beforehand where we just like kind of figured it out and then went into the studio. Like, do you think yeah. that helps as yeah, well? Yeah, totally. And to have all that time at Colin's studio too, it's not like, we got a day to do eight tracks, like let's just like, yeah. you know, hit record. I remember that Marshall and I met when I first uh, recorded in Victoria for Drifting and from your opinion, do you think my music is different from 2014? Yeah. Or do you think it's very similar? Do you no. think I haven't evolved? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's different for sure, yeah. That that one was definitely one one of those examples where it was like all the scratch tracks ahead of time. And then, like, some of them turned out to be, like, rock songs, yeah. you know, like <laughs> over is like a, like a rock song. <laughs> and then some were at, you know, it, like, thought of something for drums, and then it was, like, just, like, nah, no drums, it doesn't, it's not good. Which, again, is okay. But, yeah, I don't know, the new stuff, that, like, has a really nice, like, consistency to it. There's still, like, ups and downs, but it, like, sat, like, this whole record sounds to me like a, a record. Yes. So if I don't see you before you go, good luck out there. Thanks. I'll, I'll uh, let you know. We're in Market on Yates right now and uh, in the pancake aisle because one time I stood here crying looking at pancakes and now I can't eat pancakes anymore. It's probably when I was writing Borderline or something I wanted to know. and. Um, yeah, it's just where I was in the market crying about something other than pancakes. Okay. Yeah, we'll probably drive over in the next like five to ten minutes. Okay. Go see you, Leighton. Hey, we're here with Leighton Kramer, one of my closest friends. Leighton was a huge part of my record and a huge part of the sound that it is, and it definitely wouldn't be what it is without him. What inspired you for these parts? Uh, at the time, I guess I was working on a lot of other projects, so it's kind of like a, there's like a lot of outside influence, and I was kind of investing in gear at the time. Um, I'd, quite a few new pedals that I used on your record, which 
kind of, I think, set the tone for the guitar. Do you remember writing a lot of the parts? I feel like most of it was just kind of late nights and like exhaustion for you. Yeah, I was working full time at the time and I would like, you know, go open a cafe and then come to the studio and and kind of show up and be in this daze and honestly I don't really remember <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> writing most of it. It just kind of happened and I think you were just kind of like, I like that or I don't like that. Yeah, I feel like between you, Colin, and I, we were all like kind of on the same wavelength. I think there was only one or two rabbit holes that we went down that we were like, yeah, no, 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 but for the most part. I think the rabbit holes are inevitable. They always happen. Yeah. They just, they suck you right in. Like this drum kit behind you. <laughs> Leighton spent a lot of time <laughs> on that drum kit. <laughs> I like to play drums naked, yeah. <laughs> um, tell me about your place. Because I chose this place because it means something a lot to me because, I don't know, I kind of got over my fear of playing with other people here. And I feel like it means a lot to other people in the scene as well. Yeah. Well, this is Ron's house, yes. as you can read behind me. Uh, and it's, it's just a special place. I think there's been a, a lot of different communities that have kind of merged here. And there's been a lot of cool art that's been created here. And we've actually started doing a lot of recording here, which is also cool. You introduced me to Catherine, the owner of... Oscar Street Records. How did you guys meet? Uh, I cold called, cold emailed Colin like four years ago probably and asked to do a record with him. He said yes. And Catherine being his wife was there and we kind of met and bonded pretty immediately and um, I asked her to actually play on a couple songs, and she did. And then, so basically I can attribute, like, this record to you because you were the reason why Catherine... <laughs> it's true, like, you're the reason why Catherine and Colin kind of had heard my music, and, like, just being an advocate for your friends, you kind of, you know? Yeah, in a way, I think... I think it would have happened regardless, because... Like, you're a great force, Catherine's a great force, and you, Victoria's a small place. I think you guys could have joined forces at some point. Okay, well, I guess we'll get out of your hair and go to the cemetery. <laughs> This is the Ross Bay Cemetery that we're in right now. And um, I come here a lot because I live pretty close, but I also just find it really therapeutic to come here and kind of be in the quiet and listen to my mixes and my masters and kind of reflect on what needs to be changed. Um, something about being amongst the dead is nice, I guess, because the living can be kind of shitty. It always reminds me of listening to like Frank Ocean's Blonde or Gregory Allen Isaacoff's records and things that I were listening to during the record. Those are definitely two opposite records, but um, yeah, I don't know. I think that this place kind of resembles the record the most because it like holds quiet space, but it's also dense with memories and, you know, people who used to live a interesting life. back here with my friends Hugh Mackey and Esme John. Um, we were just trying to discuss when we first met 
and I can't remember. I have no idea. No idea whatsoever. What were you working on today? Just, Just this little beat, yeah. Mm. And this other one I can show you. Oh, listening to my music. Well, Hello. Yeah. <laughs> Racking up the place. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta rack up this place. Hot new track. <laughs> <laughs> I remember before rehearsing with you, like, because I barely knew you, I remember crying before each rehearsal because I was so scared. Oh my scared. god, of me? <laughs> yeah, because I was like, this guy is so talented. Oh my god. I'm gonna, like, I would just be I'm like, horrified. I can't do this. <laughs> I'm actually pissed. That's so. Pissed? Yeah, really? that's not. That's, Why? I don't know. I don't really want to have talented? that effect on people. No, I was just intimidated. Oh, that's is Q that baby. Quinn? Yeah, it is. Q baby. Hi, Angel. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hello. Bonjour. Bonjour. <laughs> um, Hugh brought in up you kissing my face on the album. Yeah. And I made a statement that I wouldn't be opposed to making it with you. I think that's really hot, and uh, you should hit me up later when the camera's not on. Okay, I'll DM you. I was also talking about how one of my favorite, like, sounds on the record is the roads and the tape delay. Yeah, that's Colin. Yeah. Pretty much. Colin Stewart. Yeah. What was going on there again? Well, Colin's just got an ear. I, that was his idea. He's like, let's do the space echo. Yeah. It's just him being a genius. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of how it goes Is with him. Is this the first time you worked with Colin? Yeah. Big fan. He's uh, basically, I want him to be my dad. <laughs> <laughs> but what about your real dad? <laughs> I love my real dad. He could be my you second dad. You could have dad. two dads. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> Wait. The end of every night. <laughs> How does the verse go? Uh, the end of every night. All the stakes will high. And the stakes will high. All the stakes will high. All the stakes will high. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Nice, I really like that song. I'm glad that you I like, like it. I like how you sing it. How I sing it? Mm -hmm. I like how I sing it. I like how you sing it. <laughs> <laughs> I truly like how you sing it. Would you do a cover of it? Yeah. Honestly, can you do an opera cover of that song? Yeah. I'll like slip you a 20. Okay. <laughs> okay, good. 21s. 21s? Just stuff it in her waistband. Okay. <laughs> totally. Do dance for Papa. <laughs> Daddy. <laughs> okay, yeah, you called me daddy today. It actually made me so happy. Yes. I remember when I was recording my first record of Victoria, and you came to Infinity and... Just to be nosy and in the way? Probably. <laughs> no, to go to Dougal's show at Upstairs. Oh. Were we... Was I playing for Dougal or yeah, just going to watch? Yeah. Yeah, so that's what I remember. Yeah, cool. and we all shoved into the Dand. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, what is this life? <laughs> I need to move here right now. This brown falling apart car. Yeah, I talked to Marshall about this, but also how I kind of just threw you into <laughs> the songs. And we're just like, can you just do something? Yeah, that's a fun way to do it, I think. Like. I don't know, Marshall and I have played together a lot, so it's really fun to just kind of dive into something and see where it, see how it develops. And yeah. Colin's really good at making an environment where that is possible, and he, he can kind of lead you very gently in, in directions where you wouldn't necessarily go yourself. This is Carson Ludwig, signing out. The spreadsheets are